Hello, welcome once again to Stuff and Things, where I like to talk about stuff and occasionally even things. I'm your good friend Bradley, and today I have a very special tobacco to review for you. The tobacco which I will be reviewing is this. Well, it comes in this, wrapped in this. Maybe you can read this label here. It is Tabac Manil La Brumeuse. This is a very, very interesting tobacco, as I said. It comes from the Ardennes region in Belgium, the Semois River Valley. It is basically a burly tobacco that has been grown in that region for over a hundred years. And because of the special circumstances under which it is grown, it has developed a very unique character, a very unique flavor. And it was pretty much unknown outside of that region, the Ardennes region in, in Belgium, the Semois River Valley until there was a writer from the New York Times wrote an article about it. He had gone there, he had gotten some as a gift, tracked down where the tobacco was from, went to uh, visit Vincent Manil, the man who produces this particular blend, and basically I think he alerted GLPs about it, Peas tried some, and through all this eventually it became available in the U.S. Now it's available through several major retailers. So the blend, as I mentioned, Tabac Manil La Bramouse, I believe that means the misty one in French, referring to the foggy Semois River Valley, produced by Vincent Manil in his basement. It is available at, originally I believe it was the Pipe Guys LLC who started importing this originally into the US and distributing it here. They still have it available, but it is now available at SmokingPipes.com. Um, the Pipe Guys, it's $24.90 for a brick like this. This is a 100 gram brick. So basically you get a big brick of tobacco in this gold wrapping, wrapped in this label like this. That's 100 grams, basically two tins worth of tobacco for $24.90. So it seems kind of expensive. Um, Smoking Pipes has it for $24.90 as well. Pipes and Cigars has it for $19.99 at the moment. They're doing a little bit of a sale on this and Four Noggins has it for, for, for $24.90. And though that seems expensive, one thing about this blend, it comes very, very dry, which has some both good and bad aspects. One of the good aspects is that it is so dry and it is very compressed that the weight, by weight, you're getting a lot more tobacco than you would for just your average tobacco blend that, has, that comes a lot more moist. You don't have all that water weight in there. So you're actually getting quite a bit of tobacco for the money. I think it pretty much averages out to being about what you would pay normally for a tin of tobacco. Um, and then the tin description, well, the brick description, there isn't really one. It just says, you know, thick cut pipe tobacco grown and processed in Belgium. But I think I'll read some of the smokingpipes.com description. Got it on my happy little iPhone here. <coughs> Long the secret of the Ardennes' misty valleys, Semois remained unheard of to most outside Belgium until a writer for the New York Times received some as a gift, leading in turn to an article on this distinctive regional leaf. Earthy, floral, and cool, many who've now had a chance to try it often find themselves grasping in vain for a well-known tobacco to compare it to. Cigar-like tin note, but not like a cigar alternate universe oriental, etc. The simple truth is, Semois is Semois, a straight, all-natural burly grown under unique conditions. That writer that they mentioned for the New York Times was Will S. Hilton, and he wrote that article in uh, April of 2013. I will link to it in the, into the, in the description below. It's de definitely worth reading, interesting insights into the blend. Um, the blend type is, it's a burly blend. It's a straight burly. And one thing you should know about this is there is nothing added to this tobacco whatsoever. I've mentioned many times in many of my other reviews that pretty much any tobacco, no matter how natural it claims to be, still has at least a little bit of casing. They usually have humectants, things that will prevent any sort of uh, fungal growth. It, at the very least, the blends will have that. This has nothing. There is no casing, no flavoring, nothing whatsoever, uh, whatsoever other than the pure tobacco. So it's a burly blend, it contains burly. But this is a unique regional burly. It's not like any other burly you've ever tasted. So let's get to the vital stats here. I spilled coffee all over them. <clears throat> the flavoring, none detected, and there is none present. There is no flavoring whatsoever. The cut on this is a fairly thick ribbon cut, and I'll show that to you right now. 
So here we have our Semois tobacco, the Vincent Manil La Brumouse. It comes in a brick, basically this foil wrap brick, about this much, 100 grams, tightly packed, wrapped in this nice little label here. Very old school look. But if we look at the actual tobacco itself, packed inside is packed very tightly. If I get some of this tobacco out, I will be able to show you it is completely made up of the burley, this interesting varietal of burley grown in the Ardennes region, and it is paper dry, ridiculously dry. But supposedly that is the way that it is supposed to be smoked, and this is the way that I have been smoking it. Seems like it might have been lightly toasted or perhaps fire cured slightly but it's basically just this burly tobacco no added flavorings no casing nothing whatsoever has been added to this tobacco at all excellent now back to the vital statistics the strength i had a lot of trouble with both the strength and the taste categories in here i'm gonna say medium it's something that i think is very very subjective with this blend because it's so unique because it's so different a lot of people might think this is a very strong blend just because they haven't tasted anything like it in a pipe tobacco it it will just strike them in that way but i'm going to say medium on strength the taste i'm going to give full flavored medium because it is it's very distinctive um it's flavorful full flavored but i don't think it's necessarily it's not full flavored in the way, say, a very strong Latakia base blend would be. This, this is hard, this was subjective, but I'm gonna say full flavored medium. Nicotine level on this, eh, medium. Moisture from tin, I haven't used this one in a while, but it's actually fossilized mastodon, the very driest in our category. Um, and the packaging, you can get a 100 gram or 200 gram brick. 3.5 ounces about, basically. So the tin note, or the brick note, Let's just take a whiff here. I took most of this out and I place it in jars, but I still left a little bit in the original foil packaging. It's very unique. For those of you who smoke cigars, this might seem a little more familiar, but it is very cigar-like in the foil wrapping. It has kind of a musty, though slightly floral smell to it as well. It does not smell like any traditional burley that you you can think of. Very interesting. And then the room note, it's cigar-like, but not as heavy as a cigar. Um, a little more earthy, woodsy maybe than the average cigar. Um, I'm, not, I'm still smelling the foil package when I'm talking about the room note, but it's an interesting room note. I don't think it's necessarily unpleasant, but it's not gonna smell like very many other pipe tobaccos that you're familiar with. Now, if we get to the actual review, the first thing I want to start with, and I mentioned, mentioned it a little bit when I talked about the cut, is the fact that mechanically you have to think about this pipe tobacco in a very different way. It comes very, very, very dry. So dry that the average pipe smoker who is used to a certain proper moisture level in their blends will be quite taken aback and might not want to even try smoking it without trying to rehydrate it. I have not rehydrated it. I actually took a little sample of it and put it in a jar that I'm going to rehydrate. I just want to see what happens with that, but I have been smoking it at the moisture content that it came in. You have to pack it very tightly. Pack it tighter than you would normally uh, pack any tobacco you've ever smoked and then pack it even tighter after that. You have to po you have to pack it tightly and then as you smoke it you have to be very measured, very slow, very calm. If you puff this thing It'll just go up like a like gunpowder in a pan, a flash in a pan. It is very, very dry and it will smoke hot and very quickly if you don't pack it tightly and smoke it slowly. And even that being said, it still smokes much more quickly than your average blend will. And it's funny, you'll do the charring light. If, even if you pack it tightly, you do the charring light, you tamp it the first time, it's gonna be already over a quarter down the bowl. So it's, it's kind of a quick smoke. That being said, let's get into the actual flavor. At first, it is strongly cigar-like. Now, I'm not a cigar smoker, really, so I don't have a lot of experience to compare this to, but 
to me it definitely has that slightly fermented cigar like quality um, it's a little bit earthy though too and there is there is kind of a sharp piquant kind of flavor as well a little bit of spice As you smoke it down though, the flavor, a little more nuance comes out. The cigar-like quality is still there, but it recedes into the background a little bit more. I get a slight taste of tea, actually, which I have gotten in several other Burley blends, but it's, it's not as strong as, say, um, I reviewed the Solani Age Burley Flake. That had a very distinctive tea flavor. There's a little bit of that in this. Maybe a slight taste of pine as well. It's interesting. And there's that floral note that I noticed in the, the brick note is not as obvious when you're actually smoking it, but it's still there a little bit. There's a slight, almost sort of Lakeland floral note to this tobacco. And maybe just a little bit of that tangy almost Turkish oriental flavor as well I'm especially on this particular bowl I'm tasting a little bit of that the word for this blend though is unique and I keep saying blend it's not really a blend it's just one sort of tobacco it's been processed and packaged it's just one kind of tobacco and that's what's so interesting about pipe tobacco or just tobacco tobacco in general is the fact that you can take this varietal, this burley, you can grow it in an area which really shouldn't be able to grow tobacco very well. It's a very moist, damp, um, has harsh winters, very foggy all the time. And tobacco usually likes kind of dry, um, high nitrogen content soil. It, it usually seems to flourish more in those kinds of conditions. But you take this varietal you plant it in these interesting very non-typical tobacco growing conditions and it turns into something so completely different it's just very fascinating but i guess the most important question is do i like this and the answer is yes but it's sort of a qualified yes it's not like any other pipe tobacco i've ever had and as someone who smokes a pipe you come to expect certain things when you get say a Burley blend or a Virginia blend or an English blend, even though there are, you know, so many varieties of pipe tobacco, there are certain categories you can place them into and they all, for the most part, sort of rest easily in those categories. You kind of know what to expect when you get a certain kind of blend. With this, you have no clue. If you haven't smoked this before and you smoke it for the first time, it's going to taste completely different than anything you could think of. So in that respect alone, I think it's definitely worth checking out. And as I've been smoking this for the review, I have definitely developed an appreciation for it. So even though it's not what I think of when I think of, I'd like to have a pipe right now, this isn't the flavor I'm thinking of. This isn't the experience I'm thinking of. It, it, smokes a lot differently, it burns differently, it tastes a lot different than any other tobacco you've had. And so you have to sort of get yourself, get your head around that idea that when you're smoking this tobacco, you're not smoking a typical pipe tobacco. It's a very unique experience. And in, I, in my opinion, a very good experience, but you have to learn to appreciate perhaps that experience. And there are going to be some people who definitely do not enjoy this blend. I think people who also enjoy cigars will probably enjoy this right off the bat and I think other people who are more open to a unique pipe smoking experience will appreciate this as well but there will be those who just think it's too weird it's too odd it tastes too strange and they won't get into it I actually do enjoy it quite a bit though and I'm going to experiment more with ways of smoking it like I said I've got some that I'm trying to uh, rehydrate. I want to see how that affects the flavor if I smoke it in a more kind of normal moisture content. But I think I'm going to probably buy more of this when I run out. So I think it's definitely worth checking out. 
And if, if you buy it, I know it seems like a lot, you're getting 100 grams at once, and if it's a tobacco you don't enjoy, then what are you gonna do with it? But I'm sure there are plenty of other people out there who would like to sample this. You know, the pipe community is nothing if not generous, so you could pass on the tobacco that you didn't like, that you didn't smoke, and give it to some other deserving pipe smoker. But that's been my review of the Tabac Manil, yes, Tabac Manil La Brumeuse. I hope you enjoyed that. I've been your good friend Bradley. You have been the audience. This has been Stuff and Things. Good day.